This is the Mad Marv Comedy Lounge. Trap comedy at its finest. Where if you can't slang yourself, you might as well hang yourself. This is also where you can turn yourself into dope and you become the real man. Whoa, yeah. All right, welcome to another exciting ex uh, edition of the Mad Marv Comedy Lounge Live. I'm uh, Mad Marv. We got the co-host, uh, super co-host, Jeff Arnold. First of all, I want to let you guys know, first of all, I want to let you guys know that uh, we really appreciate and thank you for coming out and supporting all the shows. Uh, I have a big announcement to make. We're going to be uh, at the J Spot in uh, Inglewood on Aviation uh, in Manchester, right across the street from the GS where all the, uh, the hoochies and the rats go. Oh, that's where we're going now? Yeah, we're going across the street from the rats. We upgraded? Yeah, we upgraded to, uh, you know, that's a good vicinity. If anybody that's ratchet vicinity. or whatever. Vicinity. Yeah, vicinity. That's a, a good word for, for that ratchet vicinity. You know what I'm saying? Because because of the gentrification that they're doing in Inglewood, we want to give it a, a good title, ratchet vicinity. You know what ratchet. I'm saying? All right. Yeah, so that's where we're moving on the 16th of September. So be there or be square. Now, this is what I also want to let you guys know. When you buy your tickets at the J Spot or whatever, uh, you come to the door. If you mention that you're from the Mad Marv Comedy Lounge, you you you, you listen to it, you're gonna get a discount or something like that. So make sure you do that and everything is cool. What's today, Jeff? How much of a discount first? I'm not gonna tell you how much of a discount. It might be what? 35 cents, but it's gonna be something. Uh, okay. Yeah. Well, it's the tri it's the Triple T's the, uh, Tuesday. Yeah, whatever. Because we is. added one. What what are we at? It's tequila, titty, and taco Tuesday. Oh yeah, we did. We did add that. Yeah. I didn't get my tequila today. Cause Farouk drank all this shit. So what he had on Drunk Patrol? Uh, he might be, cause uh, he been <laughs> really on that. He been really on that tequila for That's a long it? time. Oh okay. Yeah. So uh, tequila got him uh, missing. You know what I'm saying? Where so he at? So where's he at? I don't know. We gonna ask him if he ever show up. You know what I'm saying? Swimming in tequila and shit. Yeah. So huh? I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do uh, both spots. I'm gonna do my spot and I'm gonna do uh, Farouk's spot at the same time. But you gonna be drunk off the tequila? On no, I'm just gonna do fruit. So ask me a question. Where's Farouk at? Well, see, first of all, no, you gotta get listen, deeper. You gotta get deeper. listen, this is deep I can go. First of all, listen, don't worry about where I'm at. You worry it about make a where you at. Difference it don't make a I'm motherfucking at. difference where I'm at. You worry about where you at as a black man or a black woman's sisters. Listen, you okay? Because you have to varnish a motherfucking weapon. You gonna varnish it? <laughs> you gotta varnish that motherfucker. <laughs> gotta varnish the motherfucker. Let me tell you something, man, about how the fucking America is. See, the white man got a motherfucker walking over over here and shit, drinking tequila, and fuck you with them two degrees over there, motherfucker. <laughs> All that bullshit you talking about, how you fucking sound stupid, motherfucker. Got two degrees and you doing motherfucking comedy. What the fuck you got? What the fuck is hotel administration anyway? Are you varnishing a uh, degree? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he thought you was varnishing a degree. That's <laughs> what he thought. Oh, I love that, brother. Man, get your drunk ass over here. You yeah. stupid motherfucker coming up in here. Now, I heard you talking about me and all that shit. First of all, Jeff, listen. <laughs> listen. Shut the fuck up <laughs> and listen, Jeff. With your Cause see that hotel, head. that hotel degree so don't mean a goddamn damn thing in the real motherfucking world. <laughs> you walking around here ain't even went to college, got called out. You wouldn't even play no motherfucking basketball. You was a motherfucking practice player. <laughs> Telling everybody you played for a shooting mother. Fuck all that bullshit. You was a professional pop water player. Just admit it. And you bullshitting your son. You're lying to that motherfucker <laughs> with your two degrees and shit. Cause you ain't done shit. <laughs> hey, look, Farouk should have been darker than what he is, don't you oh, think? Oh, man. Don't even mind your Uncle Ruckus from, uh, uh, what is it, the uh, Boondock? Yeah, somebody, yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. He's like, he like Uncle Ruckus, but in a uh, Terrence uh, Howard body. You know what oh. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, what we got going on, because there's a lot of stuff going on, and, uh, you know, election is coming up uh, close. And then, close to 80 days from now. But look, you got these people in front of Food for Less, they were like, uh, are you registered? Uh, uh, you want to register? And then, and then, you know, you got people be... Uh, Coming out the store drunk, like for what? For what? Well, I want to register to vote. Uh, for I don't even want to register. I can't even get this liquor because my ID is expired. Uh, but they got motherfuckers out here hustling though. They like you give me five dollars, you know, and uh, I'll vote for Trump. 
Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. so shit, you know, my it's vote. Say five dollars, you gonna vote for Trump? Yeah, uh, Farouk came in with his yeah, uh, lunchbox and shit. The latest bastard. <laughs> He's just gonna walk in. He don't give a <laughs> damn about no break. Look at him. I told you that. Now look here, we had the tacos Sorry, and the titty. Everybody. Here go the tequila. I was arguing with a disgruntled customer. <laughs> <laughs> I almost had to whoop their ass about my bread. About my bread. Apologize. <laughs> what happened, man? Because you told me, you told me he was cross the street cutting hair, and you said, "Look, Marv, I just gotta give her a line up, and I'll be right there." What the hell happened? Then they had to discrepancy with the the, the, the price list. What? You didn't tell them how much? You yeah, got that word said, right. Look, discrepancy. You might as well just go ahead and just leave right now. Just give me my bread. Matter of fact, <laughs> Did you, you line her up, time. though? You might you might you you wasted my time, so I need all of my bread. How much did, uh, how much she pay you? Just twenty dollars. For a lineup? Yeah, in the taper. That's a haircut. Oh, really, see, I like, charge her $5 yeah. cheaper. Yeah, that's what she's supposed to charge because you said a lineup first. Did you tell her, uh, did she say she wanted to line up first or did she add the taper after she sat down? Thank you. And I told her that uh, tapers uh, come free with a line. When you get a taper, you get a line for free. Right. But lineups don't, don't come, come with, with free tapers. tapers. See, this this what okay, let, let, let's educate these people that come to the barbershop. This, these are the ones I ate. Look, they go like this. Uh, uh, let me just get a lineup. How much for a lineup? Okay, $10. Then they get in the chair, you give them a lineup, and you give them the mirror, then they go, can you just uh, cut the, look, they make up their own shit. Can you could just cut the wispies? A trim. Nigga, what is a wispy? What the hell is a trim? I guess it's the second cousin. Or a shape up. It's the second cousin to a wispy. But see, if I got to pull my scissors out or my clippers and it's start a cutting, that's a haircut. It's a haircut. Now you, now you in a whole different tax bracket. Yeah, it's Am $25. I right? Yeah. But you so did it for 20 though, You right? can bullshit yourself, but you cannot bullshit a seasoned veteran. I done heard every lie and every bullshit you can come in the Have you heard this one? Have you heard this one? Hey, look, I left my money in the car, so look, look here, I'm gonna go get it uh after you cut me and then I'll be right back. Here, here, yeah. here, look, look, here's Man. my uh here's my uh, e, uh what they call it? Here's my uh Wick, Nick's check cashing card. I'll be right yeah. back. Nigga, yo, so Nick check cash card on me and shit. Yeah. They tell you that after they get the haircut? Oh, yeah. hey, look, I had a dude come in, right? Damn. And then he haggled me for the price. Look, he started giving me all the my mama just had cancer. We had the funeral and we just had to unplug it. We gotta show up and everything. And uh, uh all I got is fifteen dollars. Can you do it for fifteen? I said, Well shit, your mama she you gotta when is the funeral? He said, It's tomorrow, man. And, and I swear that's all I got is fifteen dollars. So I said, okay, I cut his hair. Farouk was looking at me like don't do it, Murph. Don't do it. And I was like, you know, I felt bad because I just lost my nigga mama. pulled out a wad of money. That nigga pulled out racks like he was a uh, damn uh, chief key for something. He had a big role. And then he he asked me, did I have change? I said, look here, nigga. Man. Run all of that. He started talking about his mom. I said, well, let's dig her up and shake the worms out that bitch. bitch. And I and think she'll whoop your ass. Give me that bread. See, don't try saying, to man. don't try to swindle your barber. It's not an easy man. thing being a barber in the quote unquote black community. What about now, this one? Uh, me, when, I'm sick of niggas. Fruit. What about this? One? Uh, you tell them twenty dollars. Twenty dollars. Oh, I could go down on the east side. Well, take your ass to the east yeah. side. And, but yeah, they, but see, we always want to haggle each other. For but they price tell me the what the next the shit. barber previous to me cut their hair for the discount price. But they explain to me how he fucked their hair up. Right. You know, and, and they then, want you to get them a discount. And then they want to talk about how they pop bottles. Uh, they gave their girl some money. They bought their mama a new Cadillac. They uh, gave the, the, the church some money for a roof and but all you, that now shit. Now you show sure, sure with but my bread. you don't want to pay me $35 for a full service. That's that's sickening to me. I mean, and they sitting up in your chair with brand but new motherfucking it, yeah. Jordans on. Thank you. And I, if it wasn't for the haircut, you wouldn't be right. shit. I seen a dude. Look, look. Think about that. Your Fruit. haircut is important to your appearance if you're a professional person. Even if you a bum or a slick nigga right. in the street, you want to look professional, so you want to stay well groomed at all. So time. pay your barber like you pay your taxes, and you'll never go wrong. Farouk, I believe this dude's sad ass story. One time he ain't had no money, and I believed it. And shit, I thought I did my good Samaritan job for the day or whatever I go to the club this nigga at the bar popping bottles I said uh, I know Man. when the bottles is for me this nigga gonna tell me oh you wanna sweat me about that punk ass $10 yeah. well it wasn't punk ass when you bought it for me thank you pop that bottle before I pop your ass upside yourself that's right look look in real life though them Nigerians are really get you. I got got so cold <laughs> by a Nigerian lady. She was slick Man, I'm you know I you. cut her son's hair <laughs> gave him designs everything what right? kind of purse did she have she didn't have no purse. Uh, usually they have a Prada or a coat. Yeah, so she comes to me, you know, my little apron when you keep your barber tools and right. stuff. Uh, she comes to me and grabbed me real close, uh, squeezed me on my ass and stuck the money in there. What? So 
I felt, you know, kind of like, oh, you know, like, like wow. Like, like, like you was she at the, got in uh, the right car track? and peeled off, and I looked at uh, uh, the, the, the uh, money she gave me. She gave me $6. Oh, wow. she got you? Yeah. That's crazy. But I'm going to tell you, because in Africa, everything. Better not see her ass again, though, I'll tell you that much, because I got a palm pilot for her ass. Hey, in Africa, everything 50 cents. So they're going to always repeat what you say. If you say $10, oh, that's too much, $10. Whatever you say is going to be too much for the ass. Fuck them. That's what I say. Fuck over them. Don't over, deal with over them. here, you gotta pay the, the 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 cost of living here. You know, I hear a lot of people from different states. California too high, but you make a lot of money here. You can take your broke ass back to wherever you came from with the low income wages and the and everything else is low income and feel comfortable playing a no income. This is not the third world. Nah, this no, is but California. Is, but I'm finding out though, it is expensive to be poor than a motherfucker though. It is, it but is, but check I mean, this but you, out. But you it's free to it's free to be in poverty, uh, Jeff. Exactly, but motherfuckers pay for what they want. Thank yeah. you. Because when I see the motherfuckers, because when me and my cousin was doing our clothing line, motherfuckers was coming to us with the same bullshit. Thank oh, you, man. How much you charging for that? Did you sell the white people? Yes, Did they and we got a full price for that. They don't, and they might they give don't you have, a tip, and they do all that. But, but when, when you, you deal, deal with, with a nigga, people, no, exactly. don't say your people, Jeff. Let's see. This is what we got to <laughs> get straight, America. Brothers and sisters need to separate themselves from these no good for nothing niggas. All right, black people okay? and niggas. There's a difference, okay? A nigga is a byproduct of his oppressive ass slave master, okay? And he has not. So you saying they they the white man in disguise? No, I'm saying that he's a low budget form of an oh, agent oh, of a, a white carbon man. copy. Yeah, that carbon is darker, so he's a darker copy of the white man. Thank you for that. I like that. That's the new word today, carbon copy. But what I'm saying is, <laughs> that two words? black people to understand the principles of reciprocation that know how important it is for us to start community with ourselves on how we deal with each other, with social issues and our money, and how we come together to do things collectively for us, and how we come together collectively to ward off things that's against us. Okay, like so tequila? if your black ass feel like it's cool to go to the damn uh, Gucci store. This is a true story. A nigga went to the Gucci store and framed the fucking receipt and put it on the wall in his living room. $2,500 he spent at the Gucci store and framed it. But this same nigga tells me that I charge too much when I'm charging him $25 for a haircut. Exactly. This is the shit that got to stop. Quit spending your money with the other man and spend your money with the brother man. Now, if you're dealing with a nigga, whoop his ass and rob him because he don't deserve to do business in the community either. Now, that goes, that goes both ways. And I'm going to ask you, Jeff. Now, because I think sometimes we, we all get there. Have you ever tried to get over on, on another brother? Like if they tell you the price of something, do you say, well, let me get it for this lower? No, I never did. That. No, I, I always pay what they ask for. For real? Yeah, always. I've always paid for what they asked for. Y'all some good now, brothers. Now, if you a crackhead, you, now you got room for bargaining. Y'all y'all good brothers. But if you a straight-up businessman and you work hard, whether you pay your taxes or not, see, as a black man, it, it, it's pain and suffering every day just to get 50 fucking cent in your pocket just to buy eye water to cry with. That's how bad it is. <laughs> okay? Water. You got to hustle up on 50 fucking cent <laughs> To pay for eye water to cry with a before you can handle you your for, shit. And a nigga will so, 56 you any, to death. Any dime that the black man get is well earned. So anything that the black man created and out here, if he ain't trying to rob you or pimp your sister or uh, sell dope to your mama, if he's doing something honest and righteous, please support him. Hey, where can, where can the, the listeners uh, get eye water at? Uh... That's a good question. Don't that motherfucker. God damn. So I mean, now they gotta I, I, buy it though. <laughs> shit is high. It probably at the ninety nine. Yeah, you know we so damn broke out here. We can't afford to cry. Exactly. <laughs> now talking about the social media, the uh, 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 black females. Can I get that pen? Have been like killing over the Olympics. And the thing about it is that social media has been going off on Gabby Douglas about her hair, about her not saluting. For the national anthem. Why they don't go that. off on these uh, these uh, white but women no, about I, having no ass? They be looking like uh, chicken thighs. Exactly. But I'm just saying, you know, they like bullying her online and all of that. And her mom had to step up and intervene and all that. And this is like, and it's been more black women putting what? her down. Yes. Talking about she needs to do something with her hair and all well, that. But then lot. my whole thing, hold up a second. My whole thing is like, wait a minute. Y'all have to understand, this girl is over there competing. Mm-hmm. 
So she's not trying to. She's not in a beauty pageant. First of all, she ain't at the club. No, she's not at a beauty pageant. She's out there showing athletic ability. And she's competing. And if you ever competed, you sweat, you do all that. You don't come there full makeup and all of that. I like think, you I think what a, it is. But see, a, a lot of them wait, fall wait, in the from, media, too. Hold on, that's very God. important. You know what I think it is? I think that these women that's complaining, they want to add a hair weave as an uh, Olymp- Olympic event. Thank you. Wow. But what I'm saying is this. I know the sister's from all country, and not to be offensive to my black women because you're beautiful, and you should adorn your beautiful body with the finest of things. But you out there trying to win a gold medal. Why you got chains and necklaces and, 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 and fake nails and shit on? When you look at the, the, the China lady or the European lady, they don't have none of that shit on. They out there trying to win. Now, let me tell you this about the sister here. A lot of American black women are brainwashed with this uh, falsified fact that other people's hair is better than your hair. This is why you go out in another part of the oppression of your slave-like thinking. You spend all your damn money, 10 to 20 of thousands of dollars within three or four years for fake ass hair that's not yours okay take care of your own hair sister be comfortable in your own skin and love yourself for who you are for so but her about, having I her mean, hair I in mean, her natural state makes a statement through all the world that the most dominant man on this planet earth is American black man and the most dominant woman on this planet is who gave birth to the living God is American black woman so everybody have to bow down and respect the queen how many we're time, worried about look, her damn hair how, worry about your nappy ass hair and feed them kids <laughs> for real. how many times we been Got the shop. damn weave, and you ain't even got shit in the ice box to feed them because your weave took all the money. Look, how many times we've been in the shop and the woman spend a uh, hundred and forty dollars on her weave? They want to get her son a haircut. We tell them fifteen dollars. She want to spend five. Oh, that that's too much. See, that's yeah. Then, that's then when shit. you cut the little, then, then when you cut his hair, he got. Enough dirt on this damn scalp, you can grow a whole goddamn uh, potatoes. You can grow a farm <laughs> on this head. You got so much dirt on the top of your scalp, you can grow potatoes, okay? And wing worms and all this other stuff. And a, and a, and a little, uh, he wa- I wanted to call him a nigga, but I'm trying to be far <laughs> from saying it. But he won't stay still, okay? It is not an easy job to give you a perfect haircut when you don't stay still and I gotta deal with dirty hair, greasy hair, one of you got wingworms or lice and all this other stuff. Okay, now you got all this Damn. money on this maintenance for a little girl on India uh, hair, her hair, but you don't want to maintain your son's hair with simple soap and grease. Get your shit together, sisters out there in America. <laughs> I'm tired of this, okay? I love you. I'm trying to support you. But I can't let you keep on going on in the wrong way with all this madness that's adding to uh, this deplorable situation that we live in. Hey, you been and study- I said deplorable, right? You been studying yeah. your words? You been studying your yeah. words? Because we was waiting for it, and he, he, got him, he, he damn near got him all right. No, hey. I'm going to fuck up three words before it's over with. <laughs> purposely, people. But all right, we about to go. we about to go to break right now. And, uh, make sure you uh, chime in and call in at uh, 323-293-3375. And uh, let's, let's see what y'all feel about uh, your behavior at the barbershop. And we're back, and we're back uh, talking about this haircut situation because we got on a serious topic right here because, you know, I've been a barber for a while, and it's some strange things go on in the barber shop. I mean, 
it used to be a cool place, especially working on Crenshaw. I used to call it the Crenshaw Shopping Network because we we didn't have to even leave. We anything we wanted, <laughs> we wanted food, it was delivered to us. Uh, it'd be Christmas, Valentine's Day, people come in and we can get it without leaving. What's going on in the barbershop now? Oh, oh, in the barbershop now, I see a lot of men are not in there with the kids, and a lot of the women bring the uh, the, the male children in, and they don't know what the hell to do with that hair. <coughs> and this is my this is my main one. Uh, you get to picking the, the little boy hair out, and then right. they get to crying, yeah. and then the mama get to, you're hurting him, you're hurting him. And I said, well, why don't you comb the hair before? You? Well, he doesn't like me to comb it. So you just just letting this shit roll up like taco meat on this kid's hair. Yeah. But shit. your shit look like fine silk. Oh, yeah. yeah. Your, your shit uh, fine and shit coming wavy. up in there whipped and all that, her nails, everything together. Yeah, and so they dragging the kids. What like, I yeah. do is, see, I ain't got time for all that shit. I ain't gonna go through it. So what I do is, I send that mama to McDonald's or something. Go get him a little cheeseburger or something. While she going, I'm gonna put him in a headlock and I'm picking that shit out and and wipe Combing his eyes. That shit. All, yeah, because sometimes you got to do that with these kids. Uh, what about did, did your kid ever have a problem with uh, get his haircut? No, never, never. You ever send him to the barbershop with his mama? Yeah. How'd she always fuck his head up. <laughs> she always messed his head up. I mean, you know, because she was always wanting to cut, you know, one style and all that. But then, you know, as he got older, I was like, man, you can't keep letting your mama decide what kind of haircut you want right. to wear. You got to decide. You have to talk up for yourself and tell the barber what you want. Yeah. You know, and then he started doing it. So he started going with me a lot more. Right, right. So, I mean, so, you know, that was cool. To, uh, that was cool taking them to the barbershop. That's shop, a good you know? point because, you know, how many times we had them kids come in there and then the, uh, the daddy or somebody say, okay, tell them what you want. And then when, when the kid got an opportunity, he'd be whispering and shit, let me just get it one and, and uh, um, can I just get it? Like, like what? That's for being around his mama a lot. Yeah. Jeff, I like your beard and shit, man. You like that? Yeah, it's all right, man. That salt and pepper, man. You That's know? what yeah. that is? That's what it is, player. That's all right, man. You know, you know that's that wisdom, player. You're going to get somebody, it soon. I thought somebody put glue on, glue on his face and he rubbed a white cat on his face. Or yeah, he yeah, looked like a distinguished uh, Ben Vereen. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that shit tight, though, <laughs> Jeff. I like that, <laughs> though, man. That's Chicken cool, George, man. he look like Chicken George. You know? yeah. Chicken George 3000. It's like shit. So the next topic we're going to talk about, man, is um, the race that went on with um, two fantastic um, races. Um, Shawnee Miller. You talking about the Olympics? And, uh, yeah. Uh, Shawnee Miller and um, Allison um, Felix. Shawnee Miller dived. Across she the dive, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the system for yeah, the Bahamas. You got it. Yes. So, how do you feel about that? Hey, you gotta I mean, do whatever you gotta do to exactly. win, man. Yeah. It ain't nothing in the rule book to say that you can't you could Superman do that. Right. a exactly. hole for a gold medal, and she did that, so she deserved it. Whoever crossed the finish line first, first do it. Yeah. So that's the, like the same as uh, when um, one of the Williams sisters was in the Olympic, and then she won, and then she crip walked, and they they was uh, getting mad. Right. At her about she got to represent I mean, for the yeah. CPT, man. If you're a winner. A winner should be able to do whatever they want Thank to do. Thank you. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Because winner's going to win, loser's going to lose. So I never. So a winner shouldn't be able to just show their ass to the whole world. Don't, don't just moan everybody in the world. Now, if, if they get to twerk You want a crip win. walk? Uh, yeah, I like twerk. Yeah, That's, they twerk. You want to twerk or something like that? Feel free. I know? like that volleyball a bit uh, now. Yeah. So beach, did you like it? Volleyball. So uh, speaking of crip walk, did you like it when Steph Curry, when they won last year, when he crip walked? Yeah, but he didn't do it right. That wasn't crip walk. <laughs> that was like a Golden State. Yeah. What you, would you call that? that was, that was, Golden that, State that, Shuffle? That's yeah. called inner city square dancing, what he was doing. That was not the crip walk. That was walk. Golden that was State Shuffle? Bullshit. Yeah. You know? yeah. The inner city square dance because he's a square ass cat, and that wasn't a crip walk. Well, you know, the Rams is back uh, to L.A., and uh, we had, a, we had they a game. had a good game. They won. Dallas, yeah, we yeah. had a good game uh, last week. Did y'all go? No, nah, we'd be at work Saturday. We were at work. Yeah. But tickets is like $50. You can go uh, and watch Rams. They got a game coming up this weekend. I might go to that one. I might see that, you know what I'm saying, before the tickets get too high. I might go and uh, might go and Before they move them. to um, Inglewood. That's when they go get high. They go stay at 50 at the damn concert. When they go to Inglewood, that's when they go get high? Yeah. Well, they're trying to make that stadium in Inglewood um, hot like the at and State, State of the Arts. Yeah, like, in, um, like Dallas, um, where they play at. They better, have have no, they better not have no uh, 12 few, dollars. A few dogs. movies, theaters, a couple yeah, we, of five-star hotels, yeah, restaurants. restaurants. Yeah. So is it, are they still going to uh, keep like casinos Like the Grove there? Shopping Complexes. Are they still going to have a casino in there where you can gamble? Yeah, well, they got that brand-new Hollywood casino they already yeah, built. Right next door, yeah. Once they start opening up, they go tear the old one down to make mm -hmm. more space for the stadium and everything. Because that old one was raggedy. It was yeah. raggedy. Even the racetrack was raggedy. All that shit was ragged. It's time to build that Last shit. Last time I was there, I seen a rat kicking over a can looking for some <laughs> chips to go back in there and gamble. It's like that rat. Uh, y'all saw that rat pizza, didn't y'all? 
No, nah, what happened? My fucking rat was pulling that pizza. What happened? Down the stairs. Oh, that was, shit where was, was this viral, at? man. Where was it? New York. In New course. York? Yes. Oh, shit. I in would New have... York? Yes. Yeah, they got rats to the kick cats ass in New Hell York. Oh, yeah. They got rats biggest cats. Yeah. New York got one clean street in it and nobody know where it is. Exactly. I, I, look, I was there one time and I seen a rat chasing a cat and I thought it, it, was, it was, I was seeing things, but it was real life shit. The rat was chasing the cat. So I don't know how many people could, how people could just live. That's why they call it the rat race huh, in, in New York. Exactly. Oh, everybody. in the wintertime, the rats in New York, they grow like minks. They look like big ass <laughs> possums. They grow like extra fur and yeah, shit. Fur they look like a possum. They look like P. Diddy? Yeah, these motherfuckers is way up, man. <laughs> shit. You ever been to New York? Yeah, I've been to New York. Did you do the Apollo? I did the Apollo and I did the uh I did Def Jam. When I did the Apollo, I ain't gonna lie, I was a little uh disappointed because it looked so big. But you know, the my, yeah. yeah, my dressing room, uh my elbows was hitting the wall. Yeah, fifth floor. Yeah, it didn't have no uh no window in it or nothing. It was it smelled like old grand people. You know how you they take you to the, take the uh the thing about the Apollo is that they take comics to the fifth floor. Kiki Shepard looked like that. Yeah, and then you have to come down the service elevator. Right, like you used and to steal the yeah, slave. And that shit is like it, it, it's done for a purpose because it's to intimidate you and to scare you. And it's like, and then once you get off the service elevator, you got to take that little walk behind right, right, the stage right, right, right. To, the, um, to the right side of the stage. And you're just like, man, I got to go through all this shit. But if you have a great show, you're welcoming that motherfucker. A lot of, a lot of the new comics, uh, that's one thing since you bring that up. A lot of new comics is missing out on a lot of nostalgic things that uh, yeah, we Historical were places and all of yeah. that, yeah. Like, uh, you, you're a new comedian, uh, like, what kind of things would you say is your aspiration to like you want to play? Like when you say you blow up, where would you like to play? Like if you if you played it, you say, okay, I finally made it. Uh, the Apollo would be one of it. That's a grand premier um, area for all the entertainment. You know, they got a lot of places also on Broadway in New York. But I you think know. your material will go over well in the Apollo. Thanks, I think man. you. I think you would relate to him because you would come out and you would hit him hard. And if they try to boo yeah, him, he don't talk shit about out of real him. shit, people. Okay, kids nowadays need they ass whoop, <laughs> whoop these kids ass. You trying to catch uh, make people catch cases? It's well, a, I'd rather catch a case than your kid catch a damn case. If you're gonna do it, your ass. if you're gonna if you're gonna uh, advocate ass whoopings, at least tell them the proper way to do it in which they won't go to jail. Palm pilot is the way to go. Open That's gonna it. leave a mark. Slap the shit out of. That's okay. I, I prefer waterboarding because it don't leave no um. Because you just you just disciplined your son. You said slap the shit out of him. Yeah, yeah. They ain't had a problem out of him yet. He been all right. Once you lay cool? hands on him, it's all it takes. Yeah, his man. mama got her shit together too. You now, know, you I, I love whoopers? her. Did you get ass whoopers when you were a kid? Yeah, but they called that back then in modern days. That would have been abuse. You know, you my my father gave me about two black eyes before. Now, did I, you buck up to your father at what age? Never. You never did. No, I did to my father once. I was what, 16. 16? Yep. What happened? I just got to the point where it's like, you know, because I was, you know, physically, and my pops was like, wait a minute, hold up, dude. My father always been a big dude. My father uh, was like George Foreman. People you saw ask me, how do you fuck up and get in trouble with your big ass dad? He used to whip my hey, ass, what, man. What, your daddy, uh, I've heard some of the stories about your father, and would you say he was like, like one of them uh, Avengers or something? Because you told me about how he pulled his own teeth. Yeah, pulled his own wisdom, too. Yeah, see, yeah, but what, somebody, what do you use? What kind of somebody you don't want to fuck with? Then. Some uh, wire cutters. You put it. <laughs> that's somebody you don't want to fuck with. Then. Sober, no liquor, no none of that. What? My my pops was a really hard nosed type of guy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, well, that's they were men back then. Yeah. And the one thing that it, it discouraged me from you know challenging my dad is my boy, my homie, my best friend I grew up with. I saw his dad beat the fuck out of him. How old was he? He was 16. Yeah, well, see, that would probably would have been me, you growing up with me because my, my father whooped my friend's ass. And that's, you know what? Was he still I, your friend afterwards? Yeah. We yeah, because afterwards, to this day. And that, me and my boy left because he always fucked with me. He's like, man, you punked out. You ain't even help. I was like, man, the way your pops was hitting your motherfucking <laughs> ass. And his father turned to me and he was like, you his best friend, jump in. I'm like, I ain't got shit no. to do with this. Yeah, thank you. I don't have shit to do with He's like, In no. In fact, I told him, don't do that shit. <laughs> you know, he walking up to me, and, you know, and his pops was like, I'm 6'2". His, uh, my buddy is 6'1". His pops was like 5'11". But his pops was like, you know, you know, built. Mm. And he just like took that watch off. And, you know, and, and I love you, Terry. You know, and I tell this story. <laughs> and Terry was talking shit to him. And Terry was like muscle bound. And he's, you know, his mom kept telling him to take out the trash. Yeah. And he like, you know, I'm getting to it. And his pop's like, yo, man, how many times your mom got to tell you that? 
And you know, Terry first, because he's not, he's not that, he wasn't that handsome. He had the keloids and all that. <laughs> but he had a fine girlfriend that was fucking him. What was her name? So, Keisha? You know, Diane. Oh, okay. She was an Indian girl. And that shit was going to his head because, you know, the pussy got the best of him. So he was feeling himself. So he like, man, I ain't got to do shit. I'll do it when I'm ready. And his pops came up to him and just started smashing what? on him. Man, and I'm sitting back there like, Did Damn. he hit him in them keloids? Nah. He, I mean, all body shots. I remember my see my up. father slap my cousin unconscious because he was slipping <laughs> backwards in the chair. And I fucked me up because he was mad at me. He was picking me up from juvenile hall for fucking up. How was your cousin when he slapped shit. shit out of him? About 13 to 14. Yeah, that's You know how you sit in the chair backwards watching TV? Yeah. He slapped his ass. He <laughs> fell on the floor. And I thought he was dead. He didn't move for about two or three <laughs> minutes. And that's when you can get away with it, though. Yeah, so I'm trying to walk past my father, walking to the side so, you know, he don't fuck me up. I get past him and try to run down the hallway. He kicked me in my ass so hard. My head hit the light at the top of the thing, and I fell into the damn, uh, what's that, the heater. Yeah. The oh, the one on heater. the floor? Oh, the, oh, no, the, the long wall the heater furnace. at the end oh, the of the no, highway. The noisy motherfucker. Yeah. 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 Another time, you know, I kind of got sick as shit Pops was going through. You know, I never bucked up to him. But one time, I, after listening to his long-ass surname, I told him, Pops, just because you're the parent don't make you right all the damn time. So he got pissed off at me and pulled a gun on me, man. What? My father was crazy. I'm mine too. So he said, you know what? I ain't going to kill you, son, because if I kill you, you won't learn shit. <laughs> you know, and I'm tired of you being a stupid motherfucker that you are. So, so, so what being you a do, dumbass saves your life. what he do. He looked in the mirror, putting his tie on. I'm behind him looking in the mirror. And he said, look, there's not enough room in my castle for two kings, son. It's time you find your own damn castle. Because in my house, even when I'm wrong, I'm, I'm right. fucking right. Exactly. Okay? And he told me, you and all this little shit you accumulated, get your ass out of here. <laughs> what time, and how old was you when you left? 17. I was, when I, uh, I left Yeah, he told 17. me. He told me, when I come home, though, have your shit out of here. Yeah. So you can't tell these kids that shit now. You well, it's, it's the thing is because the, the mamas, the mamas be so uh, baby in them and everything. They, they you know, what I'm saying they enablers. Want, and yeah, and then they want you. They want they want to come to you when the kid is out of hand. Why don't you talk to him? Like I can't yeah. talk to him if you're not gonna back me up. Then you talk to him and whoop yeah. their ass. Now you the bad guy because yeah. now they playing Captain Saver Hole trying sense to is save. What it gonna him? make for me to sit up there and talk to him? And then you coming around trying to play the good guy again? Right. You know what I'm saying? He's still gonna do some old crazy ass sidewinding shit. My so they don't come to be, terms hey. with no real consequences of life. They think everything going to be given to them and people owe them something. Farouk, my son looked at me uh, the other day, and uh, he said, you just mad at me because I don't want to uh, do what you do. You're a barber. I looked at him like, what the fuck? See? You've been eating off this barber-ass salary. You've been going to uh, fucking Disneyland, Dodger Stadium. All this shit off this good ass. Yeah, unappreciated. Well, you should have told him oh, that he's. Wait, hold on, hold on. He's a junior bum. Look, look here. So I looked at him. I said, "Look here, uh, do you pay for the uh, toilet paper you uh, you use to wipe your ass? If you don't, you can't wipe your ass. How old you is can't your son? See, this thing is nineteen years old. Yeah, my son just turned. Yeah, my son just turned twenty. So look here. I know it's time for him to go. Sunday. But look here. This I. You know I'm an asshole. So I got some uh, plan for him because I know he don't listen to the radio station. I'm gonna move the whole house out on his ass. <laughs> So when, when we move, when we move, I can't wait till that nigga start packing his shit. I'm like, where you going? Oh, I thought we was moving. No, we ain't going nowhere. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. Because uh, uh, you don't want to get some of this good-ass barber life. Yeah, you know the buck stops here. The buck stops. You on your own. Take your ass to the military, to the job corps or something. So, and, and that, come a point, you got to cut them off, man. You do. Tough and, um, love. Um, like when I had to lay hands on my son, and I told the motherfucker, you can tell your mama. Because we was going through that nasty divorce. You can tell your mama, whatever, though. Because when I get bailed out, if I go to jail, I'm going to get bailed out. And I showed him my little role. This is my bailout money. I'm going to beat your ass again for sending me there. Well, that's the thing. You know? When you, when you whoop, whoop, whoop your kid's ass or whatever, make it, make it count. I only had to do, my son now is a great kid now. Because the last I thing mean, you want to do. He understand how life yeah. really works. Now though. he's starting to, because now he's so 20 years old. So he respected years. none of the direction you was giving him. Exactly. Yeah. Now, because everything that I told him that he couldn't see. He's right. seeing now, now. He's seeing now because he's at home with his mom so now. So how old is he now? He's 20. Yeah. But his mom is back to traveling, getting her hustle on. So she's leaving him in the house by himself. So, so he, like, he got to buy that toilet paper. that bro. motherfucker calling me up, man. You know, and you can always hear it in their voice. What's up, Dad? You know when they mean something. What's up, man? Nothing, man. She's just sitting here thinking about you. Oh, what, do you yeah? what do you do when your ass is chapped? Like, no, he like, like but, but you know, it's like, uh, 
Yo, so you got something to eat over there? Right. Like, no. Nah. It's day to day operation over this motherfucker. Yeah. You know, shit. The going I've out. been for oneself. Yeah, going out of business sign, stay on the, uh, stay posted on the front line. Right. You right. know? Um, what you got going on over there? Man, mom out of town and she left me like $50. When she leave? About a week ago. Where you at now with the 50? Uh, it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. You know? So, you know. Now he's starting to learn how to budget now. Yeah. So he can't do everything he want to do. So like he like for his birthday, you know, like um, his his grandparents sent him some money mm-hmm. and all that. So he was like, I was like, so you going out to dinner? He like, nah. So I went to the store, uh, got a got little some food. noodles. Yeah, my girl coming over, so I'm gonna just cook dinner. Yeah, you got so to, like, you got to do there that. There you go, player. Cause see, this is chill like that, man. Cause I'm gonna tell you this. This is what I noticed because when uh, you have a kid that you spoil like that, or you uh, what was the word enable? Uh, here it is that it's really your fault if that kid is 35, 45, still living with your ass, and you still gotta tell this grown ass to take the trash out because you didn't give him that tough love, and now you stuck with this grown ass baby. But you, you gotta let him. But see, my whole thing is that you know, I've done everything I can do for you up until 18. I've instilled morals and values in you that I believe in, that I hopefully that you will believe that in. That work. That go out so and I, tell you. So out of that, your help is more of a uh, consultant and give them some type of support. And some now, kind of guy. And some now kind now of guy. they need help, like say if your son say, Dad, I'm trying to get a car. This is my philosophy. If you say $1,500, I'll match you $1,500. Exactly. But I'm not going out to buy you a goddamn no. car and you ain't paid one dime. That means when you run out of gas or you break a beer, get a ticket or anything, you're going to expect for me to come to your rescue. But that's what I tell my son now. I've done everything I could for you up until 18. Anything after that, monetary, that's a favor. Now, let me tell yep. you. Because I'm not right. obligated to do anything for me. Right. That, you know, I took care of your ass and you was balling. Yeah. Up to 18. Now, I'm going to say this in, in defense of some parents and, and most uh, uh, mothers. That paternal and that maternal instinct, uh, it is very uh, challenging. I ain't going to say hard or impossible. I'm going to say challenging uh, to detach that from the children. Because even though my son is 19, when I look at him, he still looks like seven, eight years old sometimes. Especially especially when he asks me for some toilet paper or some shit. And then, and then when the mother looks at him, they don't really ever see that kid Growing as an up. adult or whatever like right. that. So at the same time, if if, if a parent is, it does not have the discipline and the strength to uh, detach themselves and kick the uh, kid out of the nest, don't get mad if that kid stays in the nest. Till 65. Hey, man, because you know. I know a nigga 65 that his mama bought him his first iPhone. Wow. Get the fuck out of here. That's sad, man. You 65. know him too. No, but you know, <laughs> that's why my son decided to go back and live with his mom because when he turned 18, I'm like, hey, dude, everybody in this motherfucker getting up going to work. Yeah. You know. If you're not going to work, when I get up, you getting out too, and I'm locking the goddamn door. Exactly. You're going to have to find something to do. Dude, you know, just like I did when I was growing up, because I left home at 17. I went to junior college. From that point on, I went to UNLV. From that point on, I went to Loyal. I've yeah. been hustling. I have not been back at my mom's house, and I'm about to turn 54. So I've been on my own for a long fucking time. It's been hard as fucking hell. You know, but you learn how to survive out here. I tell you something. Now, when you when you do leave your mom's house or whatever, and then you, if you're a real man, you happen some happen uh, some twist of fate, you go back to your mom's house. Uh, it ain't gonna take you long to realize why you don't belong in that motherfucker. Exactly. Because she's still gonna treat your ass like she's seven. I mean, I, I stayed with my mom one time. I lost my apartment. I'm sitting there. My phone rang. Right. She in the room. She go, <laughs> Who was that? I said, Mom, you don't know who this is. She said, Who was it? I said, it's my fault. She said, who was it? So I go, oh, shit, it was D. He wanted me to bring the sack. What's a sack, baby? What you want to bring the sack? <laughs> <laughs> I was there And then yeah. look, look, look. I get up, we'll be in there. Me and my mom watch TV, and then I get up to go to the bathroom. She's where you going? I'm like, to the bathroom, goddamn. Yeah, they you treat you like a child, man. So look here, we, we just got a, a caller. One of them goddamn bills. Hold on, we got a caller. What's, what's your name, caller? What's up, what's up, what's up? It's Nancy telling me in the house. Oh, what's up, Nancy? <laughs> what's up, Nancy? I just saw you Sunday night. Yes, hey, what's up, Josh? How, How you doing? You? you had a great set. Oh, thank you, thank you. Yeah, she rocked the house over. Yeah, she did. A, she did a hell of a job at the comedy lounge too. I was so impressed, and you and you look nice too, uh, Nancy. Thank you, thank you. 
thank you. Yeah, but you, you ain't have to tell me, like, you know, as soon as he, he didn't say hi, man, he just was like, man, did you get the titties done? I'm like, so damn, well, oh, how you God. doing? Hey, shit, you know, that, that's how I get down, you know? Yeah. That's, that was his first thing, his, his approach to you? That was his approach, though. Wow. You're lucky, you're lucky I didn't shake him. Done. You're lucky I didn't shake him like a handshake. <laughs> <laughs> what you got going on, Nancy? Man, oh, hey, man, I'm going to be at the Ice House, Tommy Cup, September 3rd, Labor Day weekend, Saturday night. I got two shows, 7.30 and 9.30. I want people to come out. That's in Pasadena? Some love. Pasadena? Oh, so you called in to promote yourself. Yeah, yeah I did. Man, oh, you're yeah. staying busy. She, she on top up. of it. She hustled up. So uh, who, who, who else going to be at the, uh, on the show besides your titties? Okay, besides <laughs> my titties and my ass. <laughs> In my mouth. Oh, see, um, I didn't say nothing about that ass. She said you got <laughs> in her mouth. I mean, that's, that's a package deal. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, mouth. that's good, though. That's good. You got titties and ass come as a package. <laughs> and a mouth. That's the bonus. Yes. Yeah. They call that a <laughs> and in, 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 in the Dirty South, they call it Pam, pussy ass and mouth. <laughs> <laughs> they do. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know. no, so, uh, so, so that's where you're going to be at? You're going to be at the Ice House? Yeah, I'm going to be at the Ice House. I got um, Tech Holmes from the real world. I don't know if you guys remember him. He's performing. I got uh, Tyree Elaine. She's like real popular. On okay, YouTube. we don't give a fuck about them, but check this out. Do you have kids, Nancy? Did you you have kids? Yeah, I got kids. Why? You ever beat their ass? Of course, I beat their ass. In, in real life, now what do you use? A switch or use a hand? Both. I use belt, my hand. That's and, a real uh, mother. That's a real mama right there. How long right. do the, how long do the ass flippings last? Right. How, how old are your kids? I oh, I did all kinds of ages. I got um. She 10. said all kinds of ages. Yeah. <laughs> I got ten. I got seventeen. I got nineteen. Damn, you've been putting now, that, you've been they, putting that ass and titties to work, ain't you? Now, are they yeah, yeah. Now, now the age, the seventeen year old is a, a, a boy or a girl? A girl. Okay. Now, how's it when it comes to disciplining her? Well, now at that age, I gotta just take the phone and stuff away because uh. like, you can't really beat them at that age anymore. Y'all you know need to saying? start whooping these right. kids' ass with the phone. <laughs> Shit, take the phone oh, away. <laughs> Beat you, get you, get you. Whip them with the phone. Yeah, see, yeah. if you start off whooping their <laughs> ass, ass whooping. With, with, whooping their ass at the right age, at around that age, they pretty much cool. Now, did you see that viral video of that mom in Atlanta when she whipped her child's ass for having sex and um, the child um, posted it on Facebook? Did you see that video? Mm-mm, I didn't see that one. How old was the child? Uh, 17. No, 16. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, oh, it's time for that motherfucker to get out. Oh, but the mom was wailing on her ass, though. Yeah, but then people like when you when you beating them at that age, it's not a belt anymore. You like throwing fists, you know, at them. You punching them, and you doing like the Mike Tyson and stuff. Shit, I told my son is twelve that I'm beating his ass like that. His feet, (laughs) his feet bigger than me, so I'm gonna deal with his ass like niggas in the street when he think he's slick. Now, is that your only daughter, the the seventeen year old? No, I got two daughters. I got a ten year old. Okay, and then uh, so you have three kids. Yep. How old is the son? My son is 19. Okay, so now, so you can't discipline him. So now, it, would would you actually come to that, like fist blows with your daughter, or would you handle it a, a different way? I mean, at would that be point, your? At this point, like I said, at this point, uh, I gotta handle it a different way. I gotta take shit. Like I gotta take away yeah, like privileges. Said, the privileges, the the privileges, the car keys. Okay, so know, look here. That, that hurts keys. more than the ass. Wait a minute, I'm thinking. I'm thinking. So uh, your kids are 17, 18, and 19. No, tw- no, 10. 10 oh, 10. 17 and 19. Somebody, one of them okay, so the two oldest don't even need to be in the damn house. What you, what you, man, they still kids. What the hell are you talking about? See, that's, that's the shit there I was talking about. They still kids. They need to be they on the college kids. campus if, if, if in the they military. If they don't have their, their own health insurance. They don't hey. have their, if they can't pay their own bills. Them two, they, that's they what the military offers. Them <laughs> older two need to have their ass out the damn house. Does Job the 19-year-old military does the, school. Does the 19-year-old work? Hell, Olympics. <laughs> you should have been promoting like their ass to go school. to the Olympics. You said they in college? <laughs> yeah, they in college. So they ain't got no job? No, I mean, they got them little part-time jobs at school. But Shit. You know, they don't have no real I wish, you was, I wish you was my mama. I stay in school till I'm 65 on go your get, ass. Go get that damn Medi-Cal. <laughs> <laughs> now, do, now, go down there to that GR office and get that there that the young medical <laughs> exactly for now, both does, of them. Does shit. The, the, um, the, does the nineteen go to um, college in California in, in Southern California? Yeah, they go to college. In medical in and GR. What college they go to? Should I say it? Yeah, shit. They go to Pepperdine. That's okay. a good school. Now, yeah, does he does he stay at home or does he live on campus? They on campus. Oh, okay, and you still still taking a phone while they on campus? Yeah, I, I I shut it down, son. Right, right. Damn. 
<laughs> she ain't no bullshit. Right down, honey. So she she be in there doing sleep and pop up and you right over her ass like, give it up. Yep. Give me your cell phone, laptop, all this shit. I'm shutting your shit down. Your ass right up to Sepulveda. You right up to Sepulveda. Two o'clock in the morning, get that goddamn phone. Now, Nancy, uh, hell yeah. are you married or are you raising them by yourself? I'm, yeah, I'm married. Okay, so now, now, are you more of the disciplinary or your husband? Or is it no, equal? No, it's, uh, it's me. Well, what's your I'm, husband do? He just work. He work for the city. Damn, I mean, what is this? I mean, he called in. This is what happens when you call in. Hell yeah. <laughs> To promote yourself. <laughs> you're, a, you're a good mother. You did a wonderful job on raising your kids, and I'm proud of you, sister. Plus, you're funny yourself. Yeah, I mean, you that's a good thing. You had me laughing last Friday night, so keep doing your thing. And we want to see you again, uh, Nancy, and thanks for calling in. We love you. We're going we gonna, to uh, hope Come we on the show sometime. Down. Yeah, we're going to see you down at the Ice Hole House, and uh, we won't get your crazy you say Ice Holes. I said ice, ice house, holes. Comedy club, but he slipped to the top. I did say yeah, ice holes. He mispronounced his shit. Say Mem- ice holes. Remember, I told you people I was going to correct his ass, but I ain't going to do it. Oh, my, oh, my, I b- got his ass. Ice holes. Oh, my faux pas be about sex. You said ice holes? Yeah, ice holes. Ice holes. Mark had still, a slip of the tongue. Mar I'm still thinking about them titties. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Y'all go crazy. go support uh, Nancy down at the ice house in, in her holes. Not the <laughs> not, not the ice holes, the ice house. Yeah. Ice house, September third, Saturday night, seven thirty nine thirty. Nancy Bellini and friends. Pasadena, yeah. California. Thank you for Pasadena, calling California. in. California. Thank you for calling in, Nancy. Thank you. Yeah, ice holes. That's what you said. That's play. like strippers in uh, Alaska. In Alaska. <laughs> you ever been to Alaska? Yeah, I've been to Alaska before. Sick of Alaska. I, I like it. 24 hours of light. I, I went there. I went to Alaska. and uh, Actually, Alaska had some good barbecue. I had some of the best barbecue in my life in Alaska. Those was good. it L? Uh, I don't know what Moose. it was. I know it was good. They slow cooked that motherfucker. Or was it, was it Road Kill? Uh, I don't know, but it was delicious. You know, they scrape shit up off of the ground that's been dead for four or five days. If you smother that bitch right, I mean, I'm it's eating. cold out there in the wintertime. That motherfucker freezes in a matter of 15 minutes, yeah. so it's still fresh it's meat. How you, it's how you doctor shit up. Hey, it's fresh meat, man. Hell I've yeah. seen the program. Alaska, the last wild frontiers, where y'all, man? Let me ask y'all this, because this was posed to me. Are you a borrower or a lender? A borrower or a lender? lender when it comes to money, finances. I'm both. If you give it to me, I'll take it. Okay. You should ask me, am I a payer or backer? Are you a payer backer? I don't pay it back. <laughs> I got a thousand excuses for your ass. What about what, you for What me? had happened was... I don't really like to borrow shit, and I don't like to lend shit. You know what I'm Why saying? Why is that? Because, see... When you borrow $5 from a nigga <laughs> and you pay him back in a week, he going to talk bad about your mama, your kids, and act like he, he gave you a motherfucking kidney or a lung or some shit, man. You ever notice that? But what about when niggas, you know, uh, they, they come with these great, tremendous in, in Then when you loan stories. people money... They'll hey, take. Hey, look, nigga, find his way to your house at three o'clock in the morning. They'll if you take say yes. ten months to pay you back. Well, $10. no, the reason I ask because I'm taking these directing seminars, and we came to the part where financing how to raise money, mm-hmm. and the exercise was if you have 25 people that you know, the maximum that you see if you can raise is twenty five hundred dollars. Shit, so you know twenty five well, no, people to give you a hundred dollars? No, so ask each person for a hundred dollars, and I did that. How much you get? I got 35 cents. No, I got out of the 25 people, three was able to give me, one was able to say, and I just put it down on paper. I didn't take it. One was able to give me 100. One gave me 50. And then one said, get back with me in two weeks and I can get a full 100. And you didn't take none of it? No, it was just an exercise. That's 25 uh, people that just lied like to your ass. Personal survey, huh? Yeah, but it was just like, but it just went to show me. That how motherfuckers really don't believe in your dream and trying to support you. Uh, Nobody, because, dude, like, you gotta show people shit. Yeah, because like ten people um, got back to me, and they was like, "Well, I don't have it." Well, check and it was out. like, you know, rich people out there. Why are you asking me? And twelve people to this day, and the the, um, the exercise that we did was two weeks ago, and twelve people. Still haven't gotten back in touch with me. Okay, we about see, to, people we about see to go to break. We got to go to break. Hey, we got to go to break right now. Do a, a, a comedy lounge experiment and see how many people, when you get some money, ask your ass to loan you loan them some money. We'll be right back That's after this. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Good job. Hey, hey, hey.
Yeah, we we back. Uh, we back. We want to also remind you guys, uh, if you haven't done this, I want you guys to subscribe to the Mad Marv Comedy Lounge YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe to it so you can get all these alerts. And get what all they the get shows. with their subscription? Uh, they're going to get the ability to learn how to press buttons. When oh, okay. you learn how to press buttons on your phone, that's going to make you tech savvy because some people don't know how to do it. Some people be like, well, I don't know how to do it. You do it. I did it. I, I, I grabbed his dude's phone in the liquor store and I uh, tried to hook his stuff up. And then he got mad. He said, oh, you work for my wife. You didn't hack my phone. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, nah, brother. I was just trying to get you to subscribe. Don't He's you like, hate the nah, motherfuckers that text when they drive and they uh, just like hold up at the motherfucking light? Oh, man. What are you and talking you about? And you missed the fucking light the phones is just another reason to have fucked up drivers man you know what i'm saying i saw this guy you on ubu the, drivers need to kill your what do you call it self. ubu ubu drivers uber uber <laughs> left you motherfuckers need Jeff to kill has yourself pronounced, mispronounced his first word. ubu i, I uber. said uber that's like the african no, you didn't say uber. that's the african said text uber. Uber driver. i said uber you said what well, we can always shit. we can always play this shit back he's yeah. gonna sit up rewind this, the said, tape ubu. He gonna say he said Uber. That's all right, Jeff. But you Uber and you Lyft drivers, you need to kill your fucking self. Why is that? Because they just pull up any fucking where. They'll stop on the dime and they'll cause a domino um, effect after that and they don't even know. I mean, because the passenger just walk off the curb, Uber driver will be in the left lane and just pull over to the right to pick that motherfucker up. They ask, the, 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 the tail end of their car be all assed out. They don't even pull up to the curb. They just pull up and just stop the fucking traffic. Have you ever used the service? No. They got a new I one called. got a fucking car. They got a new one. I think it's called Postmates or whatever where you uh, you, you have them deliver you food at any time of the night. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So oh, motherfuckers be doing that, you know. What you they know. call that? StubHub? No, it's called uh, Postmates or they something like that. got one called StubHub, too. They deliver it, too? Yeah. I, now that, I my son that was, does that. Which one? When he comes to the house, my son does that. Oh, oh, Grub, Grub Hub. Grub, yeah, Grub not Hub. Stub yeah. Hub, Grub oh, Hub. I didn't hear what you said. Stub I thought, Hub is for tickets. I thought the Portis was talking about some strippers. She said Sorry, Rub, people, Rub. I was totally hey. wrong. I didn't know what the hell I was talking about. I thought about. she said Rub Hub like it was some strippers, you know what I'm saying? Like you call somebody to come over and rub That'd your That would be ass. a nice one. <laughs> My son Hub. does that. He'll he, he Uber down the um, Jack in the Box. For real? Yeah, and Jack in the Box is only a block away from the house. That's crazy. But you, 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 uh, <laughs> it's dangerous out here walking these streets, man. I mean, shit. Because I know sometimes it'd be late at night, I'd be wanting a pizza or something like that, but I don't want to pay no extra shit. Like, if the pizza is like $8, I don't want to pay 15 15 you know. See, there you go. You're break. haggling the price. I'll, hey, look, I'll wait till tomorrow. <laughs> That's why I told you. I'll wait till tomorrow. I'll bust over a pack of noodles in a minute. You know what I'm saying? I ain't got to have it like that. Oh. I do not have to have it like that. You know what I'm saying? For real. You're like, are you seriously? Like you, the, the I ain't going to do it. You ain't doing it? I'm not doing it. All right, man. I'll what? wait. I'll look. I'll wait till the morning. I've been I've been in L.A. for thirty years and I haven't found a good piece of place out here yet. Well, well, you you from Chicago? Got to so go to the spot by the airport. <laughs> Remember down there? But look, he's from Chicago, so he like that deep dish, uh, the deep dish style. Yeah, but I like that What's thin crust called? too. Ma- I like that Maria I like, somewhere, the, the little Italian spot down there in Redondo uh, Beach. No, in uh, Westchester. By the little oh, radio spot. Oh, I forgot the name of it, but uh, that's some good ass pizza. That's some good pizza. They got you good pizza there. It's yeah. right off of Sepulveda. I just don't oh, know the name of it. Um, yeah, it's, it's right next bar. to L- yeah, it's a yeah, bar. it's a bar. It's yeah, Italian food in there. Got yeah. drinks yeah. or whatever. Yeah, I just yeah. don't know the name of it, but it's it's, it's delicious. Maria's, yeah, Mary, something like that. Yeah, they got that. another one in uh, Redondo Beach, and they got a a picture of Frank Sinatra on the wall. Now, this is that's a good way to uh, see if the pizza good. Because right, Frank is up on the wall. If they don't see Frank on the wall, it, hey, man, they did it his way, man. Oh yeah, the Frank. Uh, you see Frank Sinatra, but he had to be Frank Sinatra with I the met mugshot. Him. You met old blue eyes. Met old blue eyes. You old. Why I was a practice player at UNLV. So what did like, you do? Was you shooting jump shots with him? Was he no, looking he, for a no, hotel? No, he came to our practice, and um, we got to meet him. What happened? So he gave us carte blanche. So to the old city. blue eyes got to see Jeff to practice. Uh, he just no. He just came and he just like up. he just came in. Now what was your came. damn number in the practice? Uh, number twelve. Outfit, number twelve. Yes, sir. So, so what happened when you met Frank Sinatra? Tell us about that shit. Twelve months on the bench. Huh? Okay, yeah. Uh, so you didn't meet. You didn't really meet him. Then he just showed up and he was like, "Oh, that's Frank Sinatra." No, he watched our practice for you know. He stayed for like um, an hour and a half. Did you shake his hand? And yes, shit? sir. Did you ask him about Sammy Davis? Yes, sir. What'd you ask? A lot. Asked him, was that eye real? Yeah, the eye was a glass. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Dean Martin. No, but when I worked on the Late Late Show with uh, Craig Ferguson, I had the opportunity to sit down and I talked to Tony Curtis 
for well, like two hours. What did you say? But and that was a great. You know, now, that was a great moment. Now though. Tony Curtis. Look, I know we old as shit, but that was the guy that was in a lot of the beach movies, right? Yes, uh, I used to love Tony all Curtis. The was actually. He was prominent in Sidney Poitier's, for you, the young people, Sidney Poitier was the first African-American to win a, um, an Academy Award for mm. Best Actor. What was it, To Kill a Mockingbird? That was in the 60s. That was in the 60s, yeah. To Kill a Mockingbird, right? No. Which one? He didn't play in that No, movie. it was for Guess Who's Coming to Dinner. Guess Who's Coming to Sidney Poitier. Okay, I'm looking at, I'm thinking about Brock Peters. Yeah, Brock so, Peters. Yeah, so. I used to cut his hair. So oh, okay, like, that's what I was thinking. all right. You know, we so, all we all look alike. Yeah. So, but um, Tony Curtis like went to bat with the studio and demanded that Sidney Poitier's name be the same um, font size on the uh, marquee. They used to put, put black people where right. Yeah. yeah, and then he demanded that, and he also went one step further and said that Sidney Poitier's name should go before his. Now, the, Tony Curtis. That sound like two is black. Jamie Lee name. Curtis' father. Yes, sir. But that sound like two black. Uh, Janet people Lee's name. mother. Yeah. Tony yeah. and Curtis. Yeah. So I can see where he would do something. Now, like that's that. some degrading shit, though, Jeff, man. They go just degrade you by putting your name small as hell. That's how they no do it. No matter how they, good yeah. you are, look here, nigga, you always lowercase. Now, that is some very demeaning that's shit. That's how they right used to there. do it. That's how it was back then. But It's Tony still like Cur that now. They just do it different. They used to let the Indians, they used to let white people play Indians. Yeah. They still do. They still do. They got white people playing Egyptian gods. Oh, and yeah, Egyptian I did see kings, that. I saw that. I saw that. Yeah. They got white people playing Jesus. I saw that three times. Yeah. I saw that three times. Go I figure. Mean, they, a white Jesus. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> that's how it was. They got white people playing Asian people. I mean, over in Hawaii, that movie, um, I forgot the director's name, uh, where Bradley Cooper was in an, um, Aloha. Uh, that director took a lot of heat. Mm -hmm. Because over in Hawaii, you know, they have um, Samoans and all that. Right, right. And they were like, you couldn't find no Samoans, extras. You had to bring in white, and they had to, like, make up. and Paint them uh, up. I, I, can, I, I can tell me a Samoan when I see one. You know, they had that movie, too, man. Uh, it was a comical. With, uh, with, uh, you talking about with Robert Downey Jr.? Yeah, uh, Tropical Thunder. Yeah. That oh, was yeah. a funny movie, baby. He, play, he played a good nigga. I, I, I like the way he played. <laughs> the, only, the only thing they had to give his ass is some fried chicken and get some <laughs> chicken grease on his lips. <laughs> yeah. And he had it perfect. He played <laughs> a good nigga, though, didn't he? Was, he? Yeah, he was. Well, we, was little, we, uh, yeah. we had one. Remember Soul, Soul Man with, uh, uh, what was it, Anthony Hall or whatever, Steve Michael Thomas, whatever, Anthony Michael Hall? Yeah, Anthony Michael Hall. Uh, yeah. Soul Man was funny, the motherfucker. Yeah. You know yeah, what I'm saying? No, Tropical Thunder. You yeah, have to be was, able. Was good, he was good. Yeah, he was funny. You have to be able to laugh at yourself. I think. You know, with America, we take we things too, we too damn rewrites. serious. You know, if you can't laugh at yourself, uh, then something's wrong. Like Hillary Clinton, you know what I'm saying? She she don't wear dresses. I want to see her legs. Put her on Saturday Night Live and let her wear a dress, and I, and I guarantee uh, she'll get all the votes. She walk but on you, wooden, wooden stilts. Yeah, man. Um, <laughs> now, Trump is um, questioning her health. Because but she, she thought, might, what, 95? Well, they said he might be crazy. They questioned oh, well, his yeah, yeah, but um, but she has trouble walking upstairs. How old is she? I guess she's in her seventies. Mm -hmm. So she's having trouble walking upstairs now. All, them, ass all them damn pork chops and that bourbon catching up to her fat right. ass. Oh right. yes, um, Trump is certified. That motherfucker is nuts. Man, you know something that I just thought about? Why is it that like? Black comedians and people on TV, like how we make fun of white people, right? right. You notice nobody never call us racist for making fun of white people? Right. But as soon as a white guy mock a member of somebody black, then you got all these sensitive-ass niggas that want to jump on him and call him a racist. We need to work on our racial relationship, people. So you mean to tell me you want you you love to see a show where some white guys going, okay, and today some niggas was acting crazy today. If it's funny, I'm gonna laugh more. <laughs> it, it so you don't funny, have a though. problem with the white comedian saying nigger? No, the closest thing that we ever had to a white boy that was a nigga was Steve Martin. Remember the movie oh, The Jerk? Oh, man. Yeah, The right. Jerk. Yeah. That was funny. He, he grew up a, a nigga. In that movie, he was a nigga. Navin Johnson. He never knew he was white. Right. Navin Johnson. Right. Yeah. So I mean, I don't, you know, as a comedian, I don't have a problem with it. I don't have a problem with Sabal none. was funny. Look, I don't know. have a problem with none of it. Only thing I have a problem with is the people that have a problem with it. Yeah. You know, that's the whole thing. Uh, you got everybody dicking you down in the society that you can't say nothing about or you won't say nothing about. But as soon as you got an opportunity to say some some shit about somebody else, now it's a big thing. You want to cry about it. Well, it's PC now, so it's political right, correctness. Correct. Same thing. You don't see anybody that's in good shape physically 
making jokes about skinny, frail motherfuckers. They make jokes about fat people. People should still be talking about so, Bruce Jenner ass. So, I mean, I like pleasantly pumped people, especially women. For some reason, I got a fetish with real thick women. How thick? Uh, voluptuously. <laughs> yeah. They said voluptuously. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to just uh, say that. <laughs> Voluptuous. Yeah, <laughs> voluptuous. Did I pronounce that right? Exactly. Okay. Voluptuous. But my point is this. Voluptuously. I... Why don't we ever make jokes about the skinny motherfucker that look malnutrition? Is we in America? Should nobody be walking around here like they need a sandwich every 15 damn minutes? They need a volunt volunt they need volunt a damn protein shake. A volunt break? <laughs> yeah, they need a protein shake. So skinny people, get your damn weight up and quit making fun of Drink a voluptuously, voluptuously sexy yeah. Like scrumptiously. Yeah. Scrumptious, like yeah. them big girls. Y'all see the, uh, the the swimsuit calendar for them big girls? Yeah. That was kind of cool. When, I, did, I, when did they come up? I like full uh, figure women. Did they have there a full go. figure woman on February? Oh, uh, man, Black they had some full figure women in there, boy. Like I that. call him a grown man jumper. Oh, there you go. No, you, you like that, yeah, huh? You, he's smiling. No, you look see at him kids at the party. Yeah, look yeah, at him. He's smiling. Like that, it must be for lunchtime. <laughs> <laughs> look, y'all laughing. Look, this summer shit finna be over with. I want to see y'all be hugged up with some bitch to weigh 89 pounds oh, just shit. a minute. In the wintertime and see how warm your ass is. I don't like be. paying my bills. I need she some She ain't going to have no snacks or nothing for your ass. I need Switching some over 230 in the wintertime. She had a great joke on that, though. Who? Um, the late, great, the fabulous um, Yvette Wilson. Rest in peace. Remember Yvette? What did she say? She used to say, because she would always find uh, an attractive, skinny woman with a good-looking uh, guy. and she Because um, Yvette was like a voluptuous woman. I mean, she was out there. And she would always look at that skinny woman, she was, and she would tell the guy, she's like, baby, when you're tired of sleeping on that hardwood floor and you want to come get in this king, you know, this cow king bed. Yeah, that comfort you know, zone. You know, so I was like, all right, girl. And it made sense, yeah. Snuggle all up with that big old ass. <laughs> yeah. You can't do that with no skinny broad, Big girls man. make you come quick, boy. Yeah. Hey, look, uh, uh, all bullshit aside, I'm just going to tell you, my experience with a big girl is is uh, they, they will pay you even if they don't want to. I had a big girl, I looked up on her titty for $20. And look... <laughs> <laughs> big girl will swallow you up, hey, though. Loose chain, everything was up in there. I came up. But, you know you, but, but a big girl will swallow you up, though. Hell yeah, but I get all that change about the corners. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> we about to, uh, we about to uh, wrap this up, and we also want to remind you once again, subscribe to the Mad Marv Comedy Lounge. Uh, push, the, push the subscribe button. It's very, very simple. And uh, let's get that up. And we want to see everybody come out to the J-Spot on the 16th of September. This has been another exciting episode of the uh, Mad Marv Comedy Lounge with uh, Jeff and his new beard. And uh, Farouk, that was late to date. But we all good yeah, we with it. I got my damn beginning. money, though. Yeah, we we have fun. We made funny in the beginning, bro. I yeah. know you probably did, but I mean, I deserve it, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, we, you know, we was mocking. I, was like, I got my shit. damn money there though. You, go. you got that right. With your voluptuous ass. Yeah. <laughs> for lunch breaks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Thank y'all, and uh, we'll see you uh, this time next Tuesday. Bring some tequila, some titties, and some tacos. Peace see to you. the world. Yeah.